My name is Anne Renault, and I write children's books. And today, I'm going to read you my book entitled The Boy Who Invented the Popsicle, The Cool Science Behind Frank Epperson's Famous Frozen Treat. Illustrated by Milan Pavlovich. Published by Kids Can Press. And after I've read you this story, we can do a science project together, just like Frank Epperson did. So get comfortable and let's begin. Frank William Epperson knew what he wanted to be when he grew up. And everyone in Frank's family knew too. Because in case they forgot, he reminded them often. When not busy with his schoolwork or chores, Frank could be found adventuring with his brother Cray, practicing his cornet, or learning magic tricks. He also pondered very important questions. Do goldfish sleep? Do ants have ears? Do woodpeckers get headaches from pecking trees all day? But Frank's favorite pastime was inventing. And to invent, Frank knew he had to experiment. So off he would go to his laboratory, his back porch. There he mixed and measured, tinkered and tested, analyzed and scrutinized. By the time Frank was 10 years old, he had already masterminded his first invention, a hand car with two handles. At twice the speed of a regular one-handled hand car, Frank whizzed down the streets of his neighborhood. Frank also experimented with liquids, but what Frank loved most was experimenting with flavored soda waters the kind that hissed and wheezed when he held the glassful to his ear and sent tangy bubbles galloping across his tongue with every gulp. Frank had his heart set on inventing the yummiest, most thirst-quenching, lip-smacking soda water drink ever. So off Frank would go to the corner store to purchase the flavored soda water powders he needed for his experiments often with his little brother Cray tagging along. Cray was a handy taster for Frank's concoctions. Some of his attempts were unsuccessful. You could even say they were disastrous. But Frank just kept on trying. One day, Frank and the other children in his neighborhood decided to build a miniature amusement park. There was a theater, a merry-go-round, and a scenic railway. Frank was assigned the soda water stand, which suited him just fine. He could share his soda water creations with all his friends. It was also around this time that something peculiar happened. The temperature dipped, then plunged. This would not have been unusual had Frank lived in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, or Pocatello, Idaho, where it could be bitterly cold in winter. But he lived in San Francisco, California, where only rarely did the temperature dip below freezing. So Frank tried another experiment. He left a glass of flavored soda water outside overnight. When he woke the next morning, Frank ran to his back porch to discover his soda water had frozen solid. He could no longer sip it. He had to lick it like a lollipop. Frank had invented a frozen drink on a stick. As he grew older, Frank's invention did not melt from his memory. He just tucked it away in a corner of his mind. And there it stayed while he and his sweetheart, Mary Frances, began raising their gaggle of children. But when Frank noticed more and more people eating chocolate-covered ice cream bars, off he went to his laboratory, now his garage, to experiment. Frank 
found a way to make many of his drinks on a stick at the same time, with test tubes to mold them, wooden sticks to hold them, and a cool way to freeze them. For Frank's drinks on a stick to freeze, they had to be cold, very cold, colder than zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the freezing point of water. Why? Because their ingredients, like sugar and flavoring, lowered their freezing point. So what did Frank do? He built a freezing box that held dozens of test tubes suspended in a mixture of crushed ice and salt. Frank knew that salt lowered the freezing point of water and that salty water froze at a much lower temperature than plain tap water. The salt and ice mixture would be colder than zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Frank's drinks on a stick also had to freeze within minutes. If they froze too slowly, the sugar and flavoring, which were heavier than water, settled at the bottom of the test tubes, leaving just flavorless frozen water at the top. Frank wanted his treats to have the same tasty flavor throughout. Frank named his invention the Epsicle and began selling it for a nickel at county fairs and beaches. In the evenings, his children helped him roll the nickels he had earned. Frank had a clever way to encourage shop owners to sell his frozen treats. For several weeks in a row, he sent one of his older children into a store to purchase an Epsicle. Each week, the shop owner had to tell a different child that Epsicles were not sold in the store. Frank himself then visited the store and asked the shop owner to stock his treats. Of course, the owner agreed after having had so many requests. Frank's children were always keen to sample their father's confections. And with all of them clamoring for their pops flavorful fabrications, in time, the name of Frank's invention changed to the Popsicle. The end. And that was the story of Frank Epperson, who had an idea when he was 11 years old and later turned it into a very tasty treat. And I'm guessing you'd like to see what Frank looks like. So here is a photo of Frank and his younger brother, Cray. Now, Frank is on the right and Cray is on the left. And this photo was taken around 1907. And you see they're holding their cornets in their hands. So I'm guessing that they were just about to practice. Here's another photo of Frank when he was all grown up. And you can see him making his popsicles at his popsicle stand in Salinas, California. And here's another photo of Frank selling those famous popsicles. So you can see just how popular they are. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we would do a science project. And so in this book, there are four science projects, but the one that we are going to do today is we are going to see how salt lowers the freezing point of water. So for this experiment, you will need two glasses of water and four tablespoons of salt. And in each glass, I've poured about a cup of water. And you see that the quantities in both glasses are the same. And now I'm going to add the four tablespoons of salt into one glass only. And the trick here is to mix it, mix it, mix it, and make sure that every little grain of salt is dissolved. And then we're going to put both glasses into the freezer for three hours. And then we'll see what happened. So the three hours are up and I have removed the two glasses from the freezer. So let's see what's happened. 
the glass with the tap water is frozen solid and the glass with the water with salt is still liquid. And so why is that? Well, water becomes ice when it reaches zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But if there is sodium chloride in the water, in other words, salt, the salt lowers the water's freezing point. And so the temperature of the salty water needs to be colder than zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit in order to freeze. And one more thing, if you touch the glass of salt water compared to the glass with frozen water, this glass is actually colder. So how cool is that? So I hope you've enjoyed our little science experiment and I hope you enjoyed the reading of The Invention of the Popsicle by Frank Epperson. And so I will now wish you a very safe and healthy summer and I look forward to reading to you again soon. Bye-bye.